الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الواحد المنعم والصلاة والسلام على محمد سيد الأنام وعلى آله الكرام وصحبه العظام وسلم تسليما كثيرا ما دام يجري هذا النظام وبعد قال تبارك وتعالى وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار خلفة لمن أراد أن يذكر أو أراد شكورا وكان عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه يقول أكثروا ذكر النار فإن حرها شديد وإن قعرها بعيد وإن مقامعها حديد أو كما قال عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه Respected brothers, elders, mothers, sisters and youngsters Indeed, we praise the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Our creator, our sustainer, our cherisher The only entity entitled to worship and we send the choicest blessings upon the final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam peace and blessings upon him. We pray and we supplicate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his mercy upon us. And we pray and we supplicate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the best of this life as well as the hereafter. Uh, to further proceed, we know that the weather is getting much better, especially after a difficult winter. And it reminded me of a profound verse of the Holy Qur'an wherein Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs believers to do two specific things in regards to nature and in regards to the weather or the changes of the nature that we find. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high in this verse of the Qur'an explains and says وَهُوَ الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ خِلْفَةً لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse explains and says, He is the being that causes the night to transform into the day and the day into the night. خِلْفَةً لِمَنْ أَرَادَ Khilfa refers to the fact that it comes subsequent to the other. So the night passes and the day comes into existence. The day passes and the night comes into existence. And Allah reminds us that there's no other force for this change and transformation except His being. And this is the very being that we worship. This is the very being we say, La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship except He. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورًا those who believe in His greatness, they will do two specific things. Tadkir and Shukr. Tadkir refers to reflecting and taking a lesson from whatever occurs. And at the same time, Allah reminds us to thank and be grateful for His bounties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse is reminding us to do two things so that we turn to Him and we continue to appreciate His favors and in return, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with the best. And the reality is, there is a tremendous transformation. Not too long ago, we saw the trees had no leaves. Not too long ago, we saw that it was difficult for us to maneuver on the roads and navigate on the streets. Not too long ago, we saw that there was bitter coldness. We had to wear a lot of things. But now we're feeling hot. We're saying, turn on the AC. We're saying, you know what, I need to take off my shirt. I need to go for a swim. I need, to call, I need to get cool. So these are all part of the transformations that are coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And a believer reflects. A believer looks at all of this and ponders and reflects over what happened. And thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these blessings and these bounties. A friend of mine was here from South Africa and the first time he came, it was the dead of winter. And the second time he came, he saw that it was the summer and he said, it looks like a new country, it looks like a different country. And this is the reality, the changes are constant in our lives. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the believers to reflect. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, we know that in the olden days, water was made accessible. And when in the European countries, the people would literally take a bath once a month, the believers in the Islamic world, because of our regulations regarding tahara and cleanliness of ghusl and wudu, taking a bath and ablution, the water was made accessible by different means. But there was one issue that many 
communities they were facing challenges with that they could not have access to hot water. So they would have hammams, what they would call the hammams. And hammams are basically steam baths. So Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he walked into a steam bath and he reflected. He said, Ni'mal baytul hammam. He says, what a beautiful place this is where I'm about to take a hot bath. And how did he reflect? He said, number one, when we take a bath, we remove our impurities. And this is an injunction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَالطَّهَّرُوا Clean yourselves, be pure. Purify your inner selves, purify your external selves. And he said, what a beautiful reminder it is about the heat of the hellfire, the steam of the hellfire. And then he would supplicate, oh Allah, protect me from the hellfire. So we make the same supplication. That when we are reminded of this heat that is around us, we reflect and we remind ourselves about the uh, heat of the hellfire. Reflection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that we constantly do. I quoted a statement of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, wherein he mentions, أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ النَّارِ Constantly remember the hellfire. And he said, فَإِنَّ حَرَّهَا شَدِيدٌ for indeed, the severe heat of the hellfire is intense. وَإِنَّ قَعْرَهَا بَعِيدٌ And its depths are so deep that it is distant. And this reminds me of a report where the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, was assembled with his companions and they heard a loud thump. And the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, got the attention of the believers. And the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, said, you know where this thump came from? There was a boulder that was thrown into the hellfire. And today it has reached its depths. And we have heard the thump, the sound of that boulder falling into the hellfire. May Allah protect us from the hellfire. So the Prophet, Umar ibn al-Khattab continues and he says, The depths of the hellfire are distant. And the punishments of the hellfire are severe as well. So a believer reflects at everything. Changes occur in our lives. We go through difficulties, we go through circumstances and situations. When we're young, we're taught from a very, very early age that part of our belief is destiny. And we say, Whatever is good, and whatever is adverse, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some of us may have a challenge in terms of finding a suitable marriage partner. Some of us may have a difficulty in terms of our family circumstances and situations. Some of us may be struggling to find a job. Some of us may have lost a, a, a loved one. All of these occasions are occasions of reflection. And it's an occasion of a reminder. I went to meet an elderly man in the hospital. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul. And this individual was having difficulty breathing. And I was there with his family and we were making supplications and dua. And he told me that I find the value of each breath I take now, I, find it, I, I realize how important it is. That I'm having difficulty breathing and I know my end is very near, but I value every breath. I realize its value now. So it's a point of reflection. And when we take a point of reflection in everything that occurs, then we are following the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah reminds us in the Quran, وَكَمْ مِنْ آيَةٍ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَمُرُّونَ عَلَيْهَا وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ How many a signs, how many a signs are believers and human beings, they pass by on a daily basis. وَهُمْ عَنْهَا مُعْرِضُونَ But many are neglectful to take the lessons from, from the situations and the circumstances that occur. So Allah reminds us in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, Al-Layla wa nahar who has created the night, night and the day, Khilfatan, they come one after the other, subsequent to each other, Liman arada an yadhakka. And the reminder is that they reflect, they reflect upon the circumstances and the situations, and they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At one occasion, the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, was in a journey. And in this journey, they halted at a place, at a location. And as they halted, the, a few companions, they decided to take a stroll. And as they took a stroll, a walk, they noticed a bird, and it was a sparrow, and there were a few eggs there. And one of the companions 
took one of the eggs and this companion came back. The Prophet peace and blessings upon him after resting, there was a sparrow that came to him. This is in, in authentic narrations. The sparrow came to him taruffu and it began flapping its wings. And the Prophet peace and blessings upon him understood what this sparrow was trying to tell the Prophet peace and blessings upon him. So the Prophet peace and blessings upon him addressed the companions, who troubled this animal? Who troubled this sparrow by taking away its egg? And the companion that did it, he said, Ana ya Rasul Allah, he said, it is me. So the Prophet peace and blessings upon him said, return it back to her. And the egg was returned. So the Prophet peace and blessings upon him considered even the difficulty, he reflected upon even the difficulty of the sparrow. So how can believers uh, go through such situations and circumstances without taking reflection, anything that happens? Last week we had doors open Toronto in the foundation there. And there were so many people who said, this is the first time we're meeting an Imam. Another one said, you know, I've been living in this neighborhood for 30 years. And I've always passed by and I wondered, you know, what goes on in the mosque. So I had the courage today, doors open Toronto, to come inside and look at and speak to the people. And I don't see it any different than any other religious place. So these are points of reflection. Allah reminds us that there are changes. We see changes, circumstances. Look at what's happening in Nigeria. May Allah protect our daughters. May Allah return them to their families. And may Allah guide those people who are abusing and misusing Islam to promote their personal agendas and their political agendas. So these are circumstances that come about. But the believer reflects, the believer turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The believer changes themselves for the better. Sha'ban, we are just entering the month of Sha'ban. Today is the first of Sha'ban. And the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, his attitude changed in the month of Sha'ban. Usama bin Zayd radiallahu anhu makes a mention. He says that I noticed that the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, constantly fasted in the month of Sha'ban. And then he approached the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Lam araka ya Rasulallah tasumu kama tasumu fi Sha'ban. I see you fasting so excessively in this month of Sha'ban. I've never seen you fasting like this in any other month. So the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, said, Thaka shahrun, a report of Nasa'i. Thaka shahrun, this is a month, the month of Sha'ban. It falls in between two great months, Rajab and Ramadan. Yaghfulun nasu an. And many are neglectful, they're unaware, they're inconsiderate of the virtue and the blessings of this month. So we are passing by a month that is great, that is significant. And what did the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, use this month for? In preparation for the month of Ramadan. So these are changes. The seasons change. Months pass. Ramadan comes and goes. Shaban comes and goes. We go, we go to weddings after weddings, functions after functions, daily basis. We go to work. Every prayer, we're, we're making sujood, we're prostrating before Allah and then we're returning. Are we bringing a change? Are we reflecting? Are we changing ourselves for the better? If we are, then we say Alhamdulillah. If we're not, then we need to have some concern. Allah says that even the change of the day and the night, the seasons, is a point of reflection and transformation. So we should take that as a point to learn and be amongst those who strive to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and follow the teachings of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. And we see the companions again on the occasion when the seasons would change, when they would remember the hellfire. And this is what it is. When, when the Qur'an speaks about the hellfire, Allah also speaks about paradise. So we want to strive for the paradise. Whenever there's a mention of paradise, Allah makes a mention of the hellfire to balance it off. So, yes, we are sinful. We are all sinful. We all have flaws. None of us are perfect. However, there is always hope to strive for the better. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, received the verses of the Qur'an that described paradise. And when the companions, they would reflect on the hellfire, they would also reflect on paradise. And one of the verses that they would constantly make mention of, Qala ta'ala fi sifatil jannah. They would say, we see the description of paradise in the verses of the Qur'an. Muttaki'ina fiha ala al-ara'ik. Where Allah makes a mention that in the paradise, believers will be reclining. 
in a good position. مُتَّكِئِينَ فِيهَا عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ لَا يَرَوْنَ فِيهَا شَمْسًا وَلَا زَمْهَرِيرًا There will be no severe intense heat in paradise. And there would be no bitter cold. There would be no severe cold like the ice storm. No severe cold in paradise. So this is a point of reflection and believers constantly reflect and turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We supplicate and we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who, who strive to learn the lessons that are around us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who turn to Him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in our circumstances and our situations. Wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiruhu wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdihillahu falamudillalah wa man yudhilillahu falahadiyalah wa nashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa nashadu anna sayyidana wa nabiyyana wa maulana muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh Brothers and sisters, as we continue on reflecting on this one verse الَّذِي جَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارِ The being that, that has created both the night and the day. And Allah reminds us in this verse that we make tafkir, we reflect and we ponder, we consider the lessons that are around us. لِمَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يَذَّكَّرَ أَوْ أَرَادَ شُكُورًا And Allah also reminds us to be grateful. So we are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the numerous bounties that He has showered us with. And specifically living in this part of the world Really, we are living like kings. There are so many people that are suffering across the globe, and we hear it time and again. But the believer again takes that as a reflection, always thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh al Rumi entered the mosque of Baghdad, the Jami Masjid of Baghdad. And as he entered, he was visiting the vicinity, so he was amazed at the masjid, at the grand mosque. He performed his two rakahs, Tahiyyatul Masjid. And as he exited the masjid, he noticed that his sandals are missing. Someone took his sandals, so he didn't do what most of us may do, that take someone else's sandals. He didn't do that. He walked without taking anyone's sandals. And he was really in, in sadness and grief. You know, the youth, they like their brand names, Nike, Adidas, whatever it is. So it was maybe he spent some money on purchasing those sandals. As he walked out, he's in grief and sadness. He looks at an individual who's begging at the corner of the street and he has no legs. So Shaykh al-Rumi turns to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says in his self, to himself that, Oh Allah, you've given me legs. I've only lost my sandals. I haven't lost my legs. And he thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. We complain that we don't have this and that, we don't have this and that, there's no meat in the dal, or there's no this, there's no that. But really, we are living like kings. There's tremendous challenges across the globe. And those of us who travel, we know how poverty has struck many communities across the world. And we are always at the forefront, alhamdulillah, North American Muslims in helping wherever we can. So this is a form of gratitude. This is a form of appreciating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran speaks about Sulaiman and Dawood alayhi salatu wasalam. And we want to be like the prophets. We want to strive to be like the anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam in their good traits and characters. So Sulaiman and Dawood, we know they were amongst those two prophets who were blessed with so much. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ عِلْمًا وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ مِنَّا فَضْلًا Allah explains in the Qur'an, we bless Dawood and Sulaiman with great bounties. So they could understand the speech of the animals. Surah An-Naml, the ant in the Qur'an. Allah speaks about Sulaiman understanding the speech of the ant. When Sulaiman would make the dhikr of Allah and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The birds and the creation would join Sulaiman in the dhikr, in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would Allah makes a mention that Sulaiman and Dawood they, they did such construction. 
that was never ever seen before, infrastructure. And they used their skills and their talents to benefit the creation. So Allah praises them. But with all these great qualities, and one of the qualities of Sulaiman, one of the blessings is Guduha Shahu wa Rawahu Hashah. He would travel. We talk about speed. We talk about the new Boeing and all these planes and all this advanced technology. Sulaiman would instruct the wind and it would carry him the distance of one month. And in that same day he would return. So he would travel a distance of two months. The time it would take for an average person to travel in two months, he would do that in a fraction of the day. By the mercy and the blessings of Allah subhanahu the wind would carry him. So Allah explains all of these blessings, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are amongst min ibadi shakur They are amongst my servants who are very grateful to me. So what did they do? They made sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They followed to the best of their ability the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Being good people, being good citizens. Being amongst those who learn and, and strive to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in that same note in Surah to Saba, Allah speaks about the nation of Saba. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this nation. And Allah says, Look how ungrateful they were. What were they blessed with? According to Sahibu Madarik al Tanzil, this is a tafsir of the Holy Quran. He writes, Looking at the verses of the Quran and some of the statements of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him in regards to the nation of Saba. Jannatani ayamini wa shimal. They had two lands, one on the right, one on the left, full of vegetation, full of prosperity. And Madarik al Tanzil, the tafsir, it is written there that an individual would take a basket and would walk from one area of the land to the next area without any difficulty the basket would be filled with fruits and vegetables. And not a single vegetable or fruit was spoiled. And the people would flock from all over the lands to purchase their fruits and their vegetation because it was always sweet. And Allah instructed through the Prophet to, for them to do two things. Number one, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship the only one that is entitled to worship. That is Allah. And number two is be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they, they refused the message of the Prophet. They were ungrateful. They didn't make sujood and prostration to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then within a fraction of a moment, Allah sent a storm after a long respite, after a long delay. Moment after moment, occasion after occasion, the Prophet reminded them. And then finally, إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ musamma. When the decree time came, a storm was sent, and they woke up in the morning, and their whole empire, their whole empire was destroyed. And the people no longer came to purchase from them. Their vegetation that used to be sweet, it became bitter. And the people no longer came to flock and, and purchase their commodities. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes this whole story by saying in Surah Al-Sabah, هَلْ نُجَازِي إِلَّا الْكَفُورِ this is the return that is given to those who are ungrateful. So we learn from this verse that when we see transformation in seasons, then we do two things, tafkir and shukr. We reflect and we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other is we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have a friend in California and his son is barely seven years old, barely seven years old. And he's telling me that he was born without the ability to do excretion. So his rear passage is sealed. There is no way he can, he can um, uh, engage in stool or go to the washroom. So he's only seven years old and he's already had 15 operations. 15 operations. And I, I met his son, I met him as well. But if you look at this father and you look at the son, they always have smiles on their face. They always, and, and the way this child plays, can't even tell that this child has, has had 15 operations. You can't even tell when you look at the face of the father that this, this is the father of such a child who every other week has to attend to a special appointment for his child. Has to take care, special arrangements. So, 
this, the, the, these are challenges. These are challenges. And we have tremendous challenges. I'm sure we all have some sort of challenge and difficulty. But when we are patient and when we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's always someone in a greater difficulty than us. Right? When, when she was approached and, and he was told that I, I'm in tremendous difficulty. So he, he gave him some advices. One of the advices he gave, he said, remember the death of the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him. Why? Because there's probably no difficulty upon the Ummah that is more severe than the Prophet ﷺ leaving. When the Prophet ﷺ was alive, it was easy for the believers to access the Prophet ﷺ, to gain interpretation, to, 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 to ask him for supplication and dua. But the Prophet ﷺ passed away. Anas anhu said, the happiest day for us was the day the Prophet ﷺ entered Medina. The saddest day for us was the day the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, passed away. So, when we reflect upon a difficulty of another, our difficulty will seem lighter. Our difficulty will seem smaller. So we need to constantly thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to be amongst the shakirin, amongst those who are grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the occasion when we see the transformation of the seasons, where it may be challenging. You know, I, 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 I read a tweet where one brother wrote, you know, I admire many of our mothers and our sisters who even in the intense, intensity of the heat, they're wearing their hijabs. Uh, there are many situations where in our, daily, in our daily lives, we see difficulty, we see challenge, we, we see situations. But when we are grateful, we'll find opportunity. We'll find opportunity in even a difficulty. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, was amongst those people who took every opportunity to derive a lesson. And let me conclude with a short story. The Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, at one occasion, he was surrounded with some of the prisoners. And the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, was instructing the companions. And one of the companions, he noticed that there's a woman who's walking all over the place. And she's so, she's in a terrible circumstance or situation. You could just see it from her face. And that companion caught the attention of others, and they all looked at this woman who was walking around in a desperate situation. And the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, also noticed. Then this woman, she found her child, her child was missing. She found her child, she embraced the child, and everyone's attention was at this. So the Prophet took that as an opportunity to, to teach a lesson. He addressed the companions and he said, Do you think this mother would ever abandon her child? And they said, La ya Rasulallah. No, this mother was so, uh, you know, troubled at the loss of her child. She found her child. She embraced the child. So the Prophet, peace and blessings upon him, said, The mercy and the compassion that this mother has for its child, Allah's mercy is far more than that. Allah's mercy is far more than that. So we, we want to access this mercy. And how do we access it? By being amongst those who constantly strive to do good. Let us make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all evil. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the ummah. May Allah bless our communities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with all the bounties of reflecting and responding to Allah's call. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are always in afiyah, in safety, in security. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the shakirin, those who are grateful. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inna Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dil qurba. Wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkari wal baghd. Ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon. Uthkuru Allah al-aliyya al-azim yathkurkum. Wad'uhu yastajib lakum. Wa la dhikru Allahi akbar. Wallahu ya'lamu ma tasna'un. Aqeebu salam.